we connect back to that like we dream. If we don't sleep, we die. Very simple. If you don't sleep, you die. Now, there are people who, who are um, suffering severe um, sleep deprivation, and even they have micro-sleeps. It might be for a few seconds, but even, even they encounter micro-sleeps. There is a fundamental intrinsic element within our structure that we must sleep every day. And if we don't over a period of time, as I said, we'll die. So here's two prayers just to think about in terms of bringing into our routine. And of course, the most important thing about prayer is that prayer works. Prayer actually works. It's not some airy-fairy, antsy-fancy thing. It works and it changes people's lives. And just the act of it changes. Well, here's a morning prayer. And I'll read it out carefully so everyone can, can hear. It's a morning prayer, something you, you, you'd say to yourself and wake up in the morning. Angels, ancestors, and to all divine, I give thanks to this morning and day to come for all the love that you continue to give, for all my family, friends, and neighbours, for all who may help me through this day, for all who may teach me by obstructing my path, for all the trials that may be sent my way, help me to remain steadfast and true for all that I speak and all that I do. Thank you. Bless you. I honour you. Very simple prayer. Very simple prayer that just says, whatever happens today, I'll try to remain mindful and keep perspective. Sure, I might lose my temper. Sure, I might cry, get angry, raise my voice, injure someone. These are, this is life. These are things that, that are fact of life. But I will remember because it becomes part of my habit every day to keep the touchstone of prayer in my life. So I'll read it again. Just, I'm sorry, I hope it, I'm, I'm not boring people, but... It, this is vital. If life is a dream, if you are divine mortal spirits, if you have the power to change the world, if you want to see the world change, then prayer is an essential component, a fundamental component. So let me read it again, and then we'll move on to the evening prayer. The morning prayer again. Angels, ancestors, and to all divine, I give thanks for this morning and day to come for all the love that you continue to give, for all my family, friends and neighbours, for all who may help me through this day, for all who may teach me by obstructing my path, for all the trials that may be sent my way, help me to remain steadfast and true, for all that I speak and all that I do. Thank you. Bless you. I honour you. Now that's a generic prayer whether one has been brought up as Christian or Jewish or Hindu or Muslim or any indigenous or any upbringing. No one should feel offensive to that. It is a generic, simple prayer. But I hope as you heard it recited twice, you can see in its simplicity and, and in, its, in its honesty that it resonates. Now let's look at the evening prayer. And then we'll talk about other types of prayer and how prayer is being used. The evening prayer is this. Guardians, angels, and to all who watch over us, my family and all who are dear in whom I trust, thank you for this day that has passed. Thank you for all the lessons learned. Thank you for the gifts and blessings. Thank you for one more day of life. So whatever be the will of the divine, whether I be granted one more morning to see, I give thanks for all you have given to me. For tonight, I am peace with my soul. Good night, and God bless you. Again, it's a very simple prayer. It's a prayer of thanks for the day. 
It's a state of humility. And it's a reminder of how precious life is. So there's two. There's a morning prayer and an evening prayer. Now, people are in prison. People are living in cardboard boxes that have degrees. People are struggling to put food on their table. People are facing severe illness. Now, in all these things, in UKD, we are working towards a clearer structure of law. We are working to a clear financial system. We're looking to a clearer context of history and how we came to this moment. But the most immediate thing, the most important thing that we can do for all those people is when we connect together and recognise that not only is prayer regularly in our lives a powerful thing, but when we come together collectively in prayer circles and vocalise. Now, I didn't say this before, but I, I, I want to qualify. When a prayer is vocalised as opposed to thought, then we, as we vocalise it, we create a vibration. We create words out into the context of this dream. We create an, a living intention. And whilst the, the, that those words may fade away, the air may pass through, and no one hear them, that vibration impacts the vibration of all the matter around it. And all the matter around it, as it changes its vibration, changes the vibration of the matter that's connected to it. So when a prayer circle begins, it physically alters matter when it's vocalised. It physically alters matter. Now there's been some famous cases of people praying and praying in the kind of generic sense we're talking about, praying for others, clear, honest intent, simple prayers, having a profound impact on the effect of people's health. And one of the things about health pray, praying is the perception in the prayer and the vocalisation in the prayer and the affirmation in the prayer that there is no cancer. There is no description of cancer. There is no description that they are sick. There is no, it is an affirmation that they are healthy that they are free of attack, they're free of, of any parasite, that they are at peace, that their body is in harmony. It is a simple affirmation of those things that appear to be the most powerful prayers of healing. Now, I, I think it would be a beautiful and a wonderful thing if out of all those that have been working hard on their court matters, been working hard to, to learn and read in the Eucadia that there is an embracement of prayer circles where people come together and through Skype or through TalkShoe or through any medium, YouTube, that they share and vocalise prayers that you come up with for others and help. Because it does work. It absolutely works. And there are people who need this help. Friends, neighbours, family who have illness or in pain or in prison. Now we'll continue to work on the law, we'll continue to work on the money system, we'll continue to work on the physical um, elements we're dealing with. But what we need now is we need to give ourselves some sustenance, some hope, some effect, some grounding, and I hope that we can focus this through with prayer. Now, I'm going to go through some of the prayers and, and share with you some of the prayers that are available on One Heaven because people coming from a different culture may wish to include one or more of these prayers in their regular daily exercise and vocalise them when you have the chance. You can vocalise them when you 
going for a walk in the morning or walk the, the dog in the evening or vocalize them uh, in the car on the way to work. So there's many ways to vocalize it. But please consider the vocalizing of the prayer as an important integ um, integral part of what you're doing. So on One Heaven Home, we have a list there on the right-hand side of prayers by issue type and you see that there are prayers for abuse and violence, addiction, ancestors, birth, childhood, death and dying. And these are collected from all the great prayers of history. So if we look at... Um, if we look at... Uh, Discrimination and racism. There's a couple of prayers there. Um, we can click on uh, the second one, forgive all living beings. A simple prayer. I can't even pronounce the, the name of the author. We forgive all living beings. We seek pardon from all living beings. We're friendly towards all living beings. We seek enmity with none. Moreover, we ask for forgiveness for all. Beautiful prayer. Simple prayer. Now, if you want to go and look at different range of prayers, then you can go to uh, prayers on the uh, top and you link and you'll see a range. You'll see, for example, there's a prayer up there which is a prayer uh, relevant to Islam. But there are prayers for Christianity, there are prayers for Hindu, there are indigenous prayers. So we can go through for example, a uh, couple of others. I've put a couple up there. There's a few there. Uh, you can look at them by author. You can look at them by issue. Death and dying. A beautiful prayer. If I open up death and dying, Mary Elizabeth Fry. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I'm the diamond glints of snow. I am the sunlight of ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Beautiful words. Beautiful words. And I hope that you'll go through them and, and, and look at ones that help you, that give you inspiration. And if there are ones that are missing, please pass them on because we'd like to add them on. Now, one of the things that is, is long time coming is not only are we going to encourage that members of those of your family that have passed should be up on the, on the register, absolutely up on the register, that also you can contribute to the prayers. I think it, it, it is the collective voice. Just because someone's written a prayer doesn't mean it's the only prayer. I shared with you my personal prayer that I've currently been using and, and I've changed them over time and I shared with you prayers that were written for others. So I hope over time that we can add to this so that it's a resource, so it's something that we come back to. There's beautiful scripture. There, there's, there's wonderful words in life that we read. But prayers are an important, special part of that. Well, that's really all I want to say on prayer. And I, I think I've covered a fair number of things tonight. And, and as I said at the very beginning, it's not merely a technical exercise. Just by referring and, and, and remembering three of the most important prayers of Christianity, the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, and, and Hail Mary, we find in those prayers that no one in that court has any right ecclesiastically to claim to be a guardian, a custodian, or an executor. But more importantly, remembering to bring prayer into our life if we aren't doing prayer, if we've forgotten prayer. I, I stopped prayer a number of times in my life. I used to pray as a child. I used to pray at different ages of my life, and I gave up. I thought, well, what's the point? Bad things keep happening. You know, why would I be praying because I've learned how corrupt this system is and <clears throat> there seems to be corruption in the scripture? Why would I be simply mouthing off some prayer when it appears that it has no effect? And then I realized 